Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Center for States video series on the essential functions for intervention testing, piloting, and staging. This series is produced by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the Children's Bureau. The intervention testing, piloting, and staging brief is intended to help child welfare agency leaders, managers, and stakeholders take a structured approach to plan for and execute the rollout of a new program or intervention. It does this by providing step-by-step -step guidance to conduct usability testing where needed, determine the need for piloting a new program or intervention and guidance to complete it, and finally, guidance on planning for staging and scaling up the implementation of the new program or intervention. Intervention testing, piloting, and staging is broken down into three parts and 10 essential functions or tasks. And it's important to remember that not all agencies will complete all of the tasks in the brief depending on their circumstances. And while the steps are presented in a linear way, in practice, often the steps will overlap and be revisited as teams test, pilot, and stage. Part one is usability testing and includes creating a usability testing plan and then conducting usability testing, analyzing results, and making adjustments, which are covered in modules two and three of this series. Part two is piloting and includes determining the approach and developing a plan, identifying and recruiting sites, which are covered in modules four and five in this series. And then in this module, we will discuss conducting the pilot test before moving on to assessing results, reviewing progress, and then making adjustments. And finally, part three is staging and scaling up, including developing or refining plans for staging the intervention and scaling up, identifying sites and sequencing, building capacity and then scaling up, and then reviewing progress and benchmarks. Let's get started. After determining the pilot test approach, developing testing plans, and then identifying and recruiting sites, teams will implement the pilot according to their plan. As noted in earlier modules, piloting helps agencies try out a program or practice with a small subgroup to see how the intervention will work in the agency context. For example, with workers, families, supervisors, or transitioning youth. Conducting the test allows teams to collect information that will inform the team before expansion on a larger scale determine if there are further adjustments to the intervention needed, or potentially lead to a decision to discontinue the intervention. As teams prepare to launch their pilot, startup activities may include preparation of implementation processes, development of data collection tools, pre-work meetings with sites to review the pilot process and collect site information that may impact implementation, for example, leadership changes, staff turnover, or a high-profile case. Meetings to introduce sites to pilot activities and supports. Design and delivery of procedures, tools, and training and coaching models. Development of communication channels between sites for sites to learn from each other. As discussed in Module 4, teams should identify site data to be collected how it should be collected, by whom, and when as they develop a pilot plan. The capacity of the site to participate in the data collection should be considered in the selection criteria. Teams should find measures that matter to assess pilot results and define them consistently for use across sites. Data should provide insight into what's working and what's not and under what circumstances. This may include both quantitative data to track activities and outcomes, as well as qualitative data from provider or participant feedback. Depending on its purpose, the pilot may collect data to monitor and assess one or more of the following. Implementation outputs, for example, the number of staff trained, number and types of services have provided. The degree to which the intervention was delivered as intended, or fidelity feedback from staff, service recipients, or other stakeholders on the intervention components or implementation activities and supports, the effectiveness of implementation processes and impl implications for scaling up, and the impact of the pilot on selected short-term outcomes or interim milestones. 
Creating a system and the appropriate tools to collect and monitor data is an important team activity early in the pilot, and then continuing to provide ongoing support to sites with data collection and assessing that data. As teams are preparing to conduct the pilot test, they should consider the following tips for pilot testing that are based on experiences in the social service and health fields. Give sites the opportunity to create a learning environment. Start with the end in mind, that is, take steps to design the pilot in ways that will inform and enhance future large-scale implementation. Engage stakeholders in planning and develop consensus on expectations. Keep the intervention and pilot test manageable. Clearly define roles and responsibilities in the pilot test. And conduct the pilot in realistic settings. For example, the team might learn more about the intervention and any necessary adaptations if the testing is completed in sites with both challenging and manageable conditions to help identify how realistic the plans for scaling up are. Provide similar resources to the pilot sites that you expect to offer later sites to test real-world conditions. Have a system in place to capture, monitor, and assess feedback and other data. Make minor adjustments as needed, but remember that early findings may be preliminary and don't prematurely overhaul an intervention. Have clear end dates. A pilot should not be everlasting. And remember that pilot testing is not the same as initial implementation. Pilot sites will need to be revisited once staging and full implementation begins. What helps teams to conduct the pilot test? Teams should review the pilot testing tips outlined and consider the following questions. What do sites need to begin the pilot and to continue effectively? What infrastructure supports are needed, for example, training, coaching policy changes, tools, or others? How will implementation be monitored? What data will be collected and how? And how will pilot data be analyzed and reported? Let's take a moment to check in on what you've learned about conducting the pilot test. Why do teams conduct the pilot test? To test out a program or practice with a small subgroup to see how it works and inform decisions about expansion, adjustment, or discontinuation of the intervention. How do teams conduct the pilot test? By considering the testing tips, launching the pilot through startup activities, and collecting data consistently across all sites to inform next steps. What can help teams conduct the pilot test? Review the tips outlined and as a team consider what resources and support sites might need, how implementation will be monitored, and what data will be collected, analyzed, and reported, and how it will be done. Now take this a step further by reviewing the reflection questions for conduct pilot test in your intervention testing, piloting, and staging workbook to connect what you've learned to your own experience. Up next is assess results, review progress, and make adjustments, the fourth and final essential function in pilot testing and the seventh module in this series. This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States, funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau under contract HHS P2332014 0033C. The content of this video does not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.